This is an oral history interview with Mildred Stoddard in her home on February, January 17, 1983. The interviewer is Susan Gorton. Mrs. Stoddard, where were your father and mother born? They were both born in uh, Scott County, Iowa. My father in uh, Bluegrass and my mother in Leclerc. What were their names? My father's name was John Thomas Cessna. My mother's name was Elsie Jane Brown. Do you know how long they went to school? Um, I don't know for sure how long they went to school, but I do know that they both taught before uh, in their early youth. So I know that um, they must have had a, a fair education. Well, they both went to an academy my father went to Cornell in uh, Iowa, and my mother went to Grinnell in, for a short period of time. Now that was previous to college. Mm -hmm. But that would be probably unusual in those times. Oh yes, it was. But my mother, I know, um, interviewed for a teaching position, and um, the man said, but you haven't had any experience, and mother almost wept and said, but how am I going to get experience if you won't let me? <laughs> Did they teach in country schools? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. um, yes. What type of work did your father do after they were married? Well, first father was a um, farmer. They lived on a small farm in uh, Iowa, in, near Grinnell. And, um, and they lived there seven years, and my father's health failed. I read something of his life recently, and he had had black measles when he was young, or maybe, mm -hmm. maybe high school, and then later he had uh, typhoid fever. So those things helped. Just worked against. Uh, right on his health, and so finally he they moved to town, and when he was they were in town, he. Um, He um, worked in the building and loan. He, uh -huh. was, he was the secretary of the building and loan association. And then later, he collected for two buggy, three, there were three buggy factories in Grinnell. And he co made collections for one of them. And these buggies were, were sold all over the western states by, uh, you know, a uh, itinerant salesman and um, but they didn't get the money so somebody had to go and get it and that was my father's job and he had many hair-raising experiences doing that what where did he have to go well um, one time that he was in Utah and um, of course they always hired as they called it a rig in those days hired a, a man with a, a, a carriage to take him, and they went out through the wilderness, in the mountains, and um, they didn't get to their destination, and it was getting dark, and finally the man who was the driver had been a sheep herder, so he said, let me get out and go and listen. So he, he got out of the rig and went and listened, and he finally heard sheep. He knew what to listen for. Um, down in a ravine, so they drove on to there, and um, they found the sheep and the man who was herding them, and the man has prepared a meal for them and let them stay sleep all night out in the open. Mm -hmm. But he gave them um, sheep sheepskins to sleep on and and sheepskins to cover him, and they still didn't get there the next night. And so that time, they, uh, this man who was familiar with the area, found a cabin where there were woodcutters. People came out to cut wood for the winter, and they were there. And um, um, they um, they let them come in, and they shared their food, and they pre let them sleep with them. And so they, that, it was one exciting thing. Quite an interesting experience. Well, one you wouldn't want to have a repeat. How long did he do that? I 
also when I was reading this history lately, um, he did that from uh, early until 1920. Uh, I didn't have any idea he'd been at it that long, but he was. Do you recall him leaving and going on trips then as you were growing up? Um, Yes, I remember him coming home and how all delighted we were to have him come home. Did he ever bring gifts? Oh, yes, of course. I don't... I had a locket that he brought me one time. I don't have it. I don't have it now, but I did have it. And um, he brought some cameos to my sisters and my mother. And I don't remember anything else. I know we were so happy to see him when he got home. Um. Do you know what the origin of the last name Cessna is? Well, it's um, it's a French origin, and it really had a, a D-E in front of it to begin with. And, uh, but that was dropped long ago. And uh, they, they came over here, the Cessnas were Huguenots, and they were driven out of France with the Catholics. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got here. They came in 1690. So that side of the family has been here a long time? Oh, yes. And they uh, they settled in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. When did they move out to Iowa? Then? About... Um, early in the 1900s. Uh -huh. I think that was it. Or their fa their parents came here earlier than that. I'm sure in the late eighties. So you were you were born in in Grinnell, Grinnell, Iowa, and you grew up there. I grew up there. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one brother and two sisters. Were you in the middle or? At the end? I was next. I was the last, the spoiled one. Did um, you ever work as a child? No, except on on va Christmas vacation, when I was in high school, I worked in the jewelry store of a neighbor. I earned a little bit of money. It was kind of fun. Did your brother work? Oh, yes. What kind of jobs did he have? Well, you mean what, in his early days? When he was growing up. Oh, <laughs> he had cows. Oh, he did. <laughs> and... Uh, he had to take care of the cows, and he had to deliver milk, and uh, all those things that go along with that. And he drove the cows to pasture, which is quite a ways, and get them back. And I used to ride the cows. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Did that help him or hinder him? <laughs> well, I don't think it hurt a thing. I think he thought it was fun to have company. Um, what was your schooling like? Well, I went to high school in Grinnell and graduated in 1919. Oh, and I also went to high school in Long Beach, California, and in pa Pasadena, California. My parents were older. You see, I was the last child. And when winter came, they needed to get out of the uh, cold Iowa climate. And so they went to California, and there was nothing to do but take me along <laughs> and put me in school. Uh -huh. And... Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just loved it, in fact. How would you go to California? On the train. No other way in those days. How long did it take? Oh, about three days. Imagine that would have been an interesting trip. Oh, the, oh beautiful scenery that we passed through. Just gorgeous scenery. You went to grade school, too, in Grinnell. Oh, yes. Was it, um, how big a school was it? Well, um, pretty good sized school. It was not like a country school. It was, uh, uh, Grinnell was a college town. Uh -huh. And um, so the schools were rather nice schools. And we had good teachers. And I couldn't, I couldn't guess the number of how many, how many uh, students, in the, uh -huh. but it was a pretty good sized grade school. After you got out of high school, what did you do? I went to Iowa State University at Ames, mm -hmm. and uh, there's where I met my husband. 
and uh, I was, um, I loved it all. What were, what were you majoring in? The first year I majored in um, industrial science, but that's really nothing for a girl because uh, physics and mathematics and things like that. So the second year I uh, changed to um, economics. And uh, I was only in school two years. A year and two quarters to be exact. Because when the winter quarter came, my parents again were getting out of the cold. And so they knew I was going to be married. So they just took me out of school and I went with them down to South Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, then I came back spring quarter. And that was all I was going ahead. And I was married the next December. Do you remember? Your first date with your husband? Oh my yes. <laughs> what did you do? Well, let me think. It was a blind date. I had a sorority sister who introduced me, whose whose boyfriend uh, was. They were mutual friends with my husband, and um, I don't know what we did. I can't remember, but I know we had fun. <laughs> What was your husband's name? Bela Morgan Stoddard. And where was he born? In uh, Toluca, Illinois. Um, to go back just a little bit, when you were growing up, what kind of games did your brothers and sisters play? Well, they were older than I was, you see, quite a bit. So we didn't play games together, except that my brother took me in the baby carriage out to the field where his friends were playing football and baseball. So I grew up kind of a tomboy. Uh -huh. Which is kind of fun. It was. Um, did your mother practice many home remedies and medicines then? Oh, yes. What we'd, type of things? We'd get our chest rubbed with, I don't know what, um, I don't know what did they use. But anyway, we'd get our chest rubbing it cloth put on us when we had a cold. And I remember, what was it? Belladonna? Was that what we used for a fever? Something she always had on hand. What, what was it? Was it something she rubbed on you? Or no, you... no that, that was to, to drink, uh -huh. to take as, as a medicine. I, that wasn't it. That Belladonna is bad, I think. It was something. I don't know. I can't remember. Were you ever quarantined? No, I wasn't. I was quarantined out of the house once. Oh, really? When my sister had uh, scarlet fever. So we couldn't be there then. So what did you do? Well, we went to my uncle's house, who was next door. Uh -huh. How long were you out? Do you remember? Oh, several weeks or a month. That would be strange, wouldn't it? Yes, it was. Except that they, uh, we were... You know, we just lived so close to each other. We were very good friends. Uh -huh. I mean, closer than relatives. <laughs> right. Um, when you went to school, did your parents pay for your college education? Yes. Was it unusual for you to decide to go to college? No. Most, a lot of your mm -hmm. friends did. Uh -huh. Yes, most of my friends did. And a lot of my classmates did. And my parent, my sisters and brothers had all gone to college, and I'm um, sisters and brother. And uh, the two sisters graduated, and my brother almost did. Mm -hmm. um, no, it was not unusual. What was your wedding like? Oh, it was cold. <laughs> and um, December 21st. And I was married in my sister's home, brand new home. And uh, my sorority sisters made a an aisle for me with holding candles, holding candle out, you know, candle holders. And um, my sister was my attendant, 
and my brother was my husband's attendant, and my husband's little sister sprinkled roses in front of us, and it was um, Christmas de Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty. Did you go on a honeymoon? Oh yes. Where'd you go? Well, we um, left on the train and went to Chicago, and then from Chicago we went to uh, Florida down to Jacksonville, Florida. We didn't go any farther south. And uh, then from there, we went up to Washington, D.C. And from there, we went up to New York City. And um, we went to see a show named Sally. I'll never forget it because it was so exciting. First time I'd ever been in a big... In New York? In New York. And then from there, we went back to Monunk, Illinois, which was my husband's grandparents' mm -hmm. home, and visited there for a while before we went on home to, to Sloan. Did you do all this on the train then, while you were all, traveling? All of it was on the train. It would have been an interesting trip. Well, it was. It was a very interesting trip. How long did you spend, do you recall? Oh, I think uh, we spent, spent all our money. <laughs> I know that. I know that. <laughs> and um, it was probably um, three weeks. Mm -hmm. When you got back to Iowa, what did you do then? Well, my parents-in-law had a reception mm -hmm. for us to introduce me to the people of the town. I think it was for, on two different days because there were so many people. Very nice reception. And um, then we lived with my parents-in-law because they had this huge house for about three years. Then we bought our own home. What did your husband do? He was um, helped his father with run the grain elevator. Uh, the Stoddard's Rain people. And what town was this in? Then? In Sloan. Sloan. And then, um, how long did he stay with the grain elevator? Well, until we moved to uh, to Monticello. How did you happen to move here then? Well, Father Stoddard sold, traded his some land in Iowa for land around Monticello. And so he had to have somebody come back here to manage it. So uh, my husband came here and we and he managed the farms around here. When was that that you moved here? In 1929. To go back just a little bit, um, were you affected at all by World War One? Oh yes. My um, my brother went to service. Of course, that was a hard time, you know. I mean, everybody was going to the train to see the soldiers go up, leave. And I was in Long Beach High School then, and they had a girls' cadet corps. Of course, I was in that. I was the first lieutenant in the girls' cadet corps. Well, what did the girls' cadet corps do? Just tr drilled uh -huh. and trained, and uh, just, just like the fellows did. So your brother went was in World War One. Yes. Where did he serve? He he had, was married, so he did. He was to he was in Fort Zachary Taylor down in Kentucky. I believe that's where it was at an officer's training school, and then the war was over before he had to go in, but. He was also in Fort Dodge, you know, Camp Dodge, at Des Moines, during that awful flu epidemic. There was a terrible flu epidemic that year. And the soldiers just died in hundreds. No, was this right after the war? No, that was right. No, that was still before the war was over. Uh -huh. And he was there before he went to Zachary Taylor, I think. Yes, it was a very sad time for everybody. Did the uh, flu epi epidemic affect many of your neighbors and friends? Well, 
yes, my sister almost died. Um, and you couldn't, you couldn't get a nurse, but she did. Ha mother, we did. Mother took care of, of my sister, and Daddy took care of the rest of us to separate us, mm -hmm. because we didn't want to be. About how old were you? Then? I was about um, eighteen or seventeen, mm -hmm. and um, we had a, a visiting nurse came in for a few hours each day to look after my sister and do the things that mother couldn't do. And we were pretty worried about my sister. And everyone was so very sick at that time. I mean, many other people. And there really is not much they can do for the flu. No, it was, it was bad, a very, put them to bed, mm -hmm. keep them there. So when you moved to Monticello then, where did you live? We lived out in Moore Circle. Do you know where that is? It's as you come into town from the north past the duck farm. Mm -hmm. There's a circle there. Okay. And we, we lived there for one year, but one year only because we had a very satisfactory house, but we had a child who was in uh, first grade or kindergarten and he had to walk to get to school or be taken. And uh, there weren't any sidewalks out there at that time. So we, that was not satisfactory. So we finally found a house in the south part of town where he could walk to school and be safe. Um, how many children did you have? Three, three boys. Did, um, they went to Lincoln School then? No, no, Washington School, Washington, Washington School, and um, the one boy had one grade in, in North School, Lincoln School, and then the rest was all at the South School, and we just lived two blocks from the school, so that was very convenient. What was Monticello like when you moved here? Well, it's very different than it is now. But we had all the things you need, grocery stores, but not supermarkets. And there was a meat market, just plain meat market, on the uh, west side of the square. It was um, Scott's meat market, and that's all they sold was meat. Then Harry Evans had a grocery store on the corner where the state bank is now, and the national bank was a bank. Then that was the Moore, Moore Bank, and uh, I don't believe there's any business around the square now that was there then. I'm quite sure that it's not. I think Cookers were the last ones to leave mm -hmm. the square that were the square when we came. They were there on the corner when we came to Monticello. The post office was probably on the square at that point. No, the post office was. No, I don't know where the post office was. It might have been. Um, it might have been on the square. On the. Um, it's where. Gamble That's it. Uh, where Gamble Store is. I think that was the post office. I, oh, wait a minute. I thought something had broken. <laughs> <clears throat> what church did you attend? Presbyterian Church. And we started in right away when we got here. Where, um, was it located where it is Yes, now? the same church. It's been re remodeled since then. It was the same church, same location. What organizations and activities have you been in Monticello? Well, mainly church things. And then Women's Club. And... Uh, oh, huh. 
My husband belonged to a lot of things that we attended together. Mm -hmm. Community club, things like that. Um, you moved here just shortly before the Depression. Yes. Was that a bad time to try to move into a new community? Well, it was a bad time for us and for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But we all made the best of it. Was it very difficult to run your household during that period? Well, had to be very careful what we spent. And um, the, the rent was very reasonable, fortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband had worked for his father in the grain elevator all, for all those years. And then when he came here, just managed the land. But then during the Depression, it, it was so bad that he got a job with the um, the Equitable Farm Loan Association um, as a farm manager for them. And it was really nice because he had a salary. <clears throat> he was lucky to get a job. Oh, he was very job. fortunate to get a job. But um, he was well trained for that. He, he knew what he was doing. How big a farm did you have? Well, several farms around different places in Deland and Farmer City and out edge of Monticello. But you always lived right here. In the but middle. we lived in Monticello. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> was how do you recall what you were doing when you first heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes, I know exactly where I was. We were being entertained up in uh, Kankakee by uh, the um, the man who hired my husband in, in the Equitable had moved up there and they, uh, they had us up for the weekend and another couple and we were in the Sunday morning we were having breakfast, and all this was going on, and we didn't, weren't aware of it. But these people had a cook, and um, after it was all, after we'd had breakfast, we he told us he'd been listening to the radio. He told us what had happened, and of course, it's all we talked about. All of, we drove home from there, mm -hmm. and we um, it's all we talked about. I imagine people were quite scared and upset. Oh, up terribly upset very upset, naturally. Did any of your sons have to serve in the war? Um, yes. Um, John um, volunteered mm -hmm. for the Marines when he was still in high school and still only 17. And we, we had to sign papers to let him go. And we said we'd sign him if he would finish school. Mm -hmm. And he finished, he took some extra courses and finished, and then I received his diploma when he graduated. And, uh, instead of him. And from, he was, he didn't get into the war itself, but he, um, I mean into fighting, but he was in the band in the Marine Corps and was sent to China, and he was um, um, Tencent, I think is where he was located. And he had some pretty hair-raising experiences besides mm -hmm. doing all the military part. I mean, all the, yeah. the uh, playing the band and all. Mm -hmm. So and, you were relieved that he didn't see any fighting? Oh, yet. yes, I was. Then our first son volunteered and was sent to uh, <coughs> sent to uh, Burma, the China Burma India Theater, and um, he didn't see any actual fighting either, but he was out in the boondocks a lot and. Uh, in that area, it was pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got home safely, fortunately, as did John. Oh, that's good. 
and then Bert was too young. Wish you were thankful for. Thank goodness, yes. Mm -hmm. um. Well, he, he did get into service, but um, the war was over. Mm -hmm. I think there was a period when people did do that. Did you um, ever ride the Interurban into Champaign or Decatur? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> and that was fun. Well, we didn't consider it fun then. It was just a convenience. Uh -huh. It would be nice. Do you recall how much it cost? Oh, I haven't any idea. But not very much. Yeah. Um, when we talked about the Depression, I was going to ask you, and I forgot, did you have any money in the banks when the banks closed? Um. I think a little, not too much, because we didn't have too much money. <laughs> but um, I remember we had paid a grocery bill at Evans, and they sent it to us again because they hadn't cashed our check. Oh. You know, they hadn't, we'd paid them plenty of time for them to cash the check, but they didn't. So we had to pay them twice, I and mean, that wasn't much fun. No, that wouldn't be. Did you get your money back? I don't remember. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Um, did you ever attend any parties out at Allerton House? Oh, yes. What were they like? Oh, they were lovely th affairs. Well, we had some parties of our own out there. Mm -hmm. um, and we used a, s a special room, costume room, they called it. And um, had flowers and for the women. Mm -hmm. And we wore nice clothes and had good dinner mm -hmm. but then we I used to attend wedding receptions out there mm -hmm. and they were lovely the um, they used the big main room for the reception did they have costume parties too um, not at that there had been costume parties. That's why they called that the costume room. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Allerton had had those parties for his friends, mm -hmm. and they had these costumes, and they dressed up in these costumes. Oh, he provided the costumes. He provided the costumes. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Of course, I did, wasn't, didn't attend any of those. Mm -hmm. They were friends like Lily Pons and famous people. Did you ever see any of the famous people he had out there? No. When they came to town? No. What were some of your favorite radio shows? Well, what? The Hounds of the Baskerville uh -huh. was one. But um, Amos and Andy. And uh, I think Gracie Allen and George Burns were on the radio. Uh -huh. I believe they were. Do you remember your first radio set? Oh, yes. It was a, a homemade thing. <laughs> My husband made it, or made the cabinet for it, and assembled the parts to put in it. And we had to listen with a headset. Mm -hmm. And in order for two of us to hear, we would take one of those earpieces off of the headset and give it to the other one. <laughs> and um, that those were the early days before, I don't remember the programs we got then, but mm -hmm. just anything, music from someplace. Mm -hmm. I imagine that was quite something. Well, it really was something. Very exciting to get. Did you listen to Roosevelt's Fireside Chats? Yes. In fact, uh, a fraternity brother of my husband's, whose name was Butcher, Harry Butcher, was the one who originated that name for the Fireside Chats, and he was one of uh, his aides. Mm -hmm. Yes, we used to listen to them a lot. What were the feelings about Roosevelt in those days? Well... I remember that he said, 
again and again and again, I will never send your sons overseas. <laughs> but How I, did he explain it when he did it? <laughs> well, I don't think he explained it. I think he just did it. Uh -huh. What was your the first car that you recall? Well, when I met my husband, he had a Stevens. And that was with wire wheels, a real fancy car. But it wasn't too long until he got tired of that and he bought a Stutz Bearcat, which was really a something. And uh, I shouldn't tell all of this. He sold, he charged it to his father. Oh. <laughs> well, his father won't hear this. <laughs> uh, well, his father knew it pretty soon. <laughs> I imagine when the bill came. Uh -huh. And. Um, but anyway, we drove that car for a long time. It was quite a snazzy thing. Did you learn to drive right away? Well, I I was I could drive before that. Uh -huh. I had driven a Buick, uh -huh. and when I was at home, uh -huh. I was about, I think, probably 15 or 16 and 17, 16, when I began to drive. When you moved out from Iowa to Illinois, how did you come? Well, we, we drove, but our furniture came on a big van, Beacon's van. And um, my husband came back to Monticello and looked over the situation and rented this house and then came back to pick us up. And we were supposed to come soon. But Dad Stoddard was in the legislature in Des Moines and was on his way home uh, to Sloan one weekend, and he saw this big Beacon's van stuck in the mud. And he inquired about it, and it was our furniture. And it was so he came on to Sloan and told us, well, you can't go now. You'll have to wait until the furniture gets out of the mud. And uh, the Iowa roads at that time were just plain mud. And so we waited and waited and waited. They finally put this big Beacon's van into a, a state um, uh, garage to get it out of the mud and out of the rain and out of the snow. Um, no, snow, rain, because it was April. <laughs> and um, finally the roads dried up enough, but I think we stayed about a month with the folks, uh, mm -hmm. with his parents. Before you before we were, here. before we were, and then the furniture got here before we did. Mm -hmm. We had hoped to be here when the furniture arrived to show them where to put it, but they they got it put away pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, what were the roads like in around this area when you moved here? I think there were some. I think there were some paved roads. Uh -huh. I'm sure there were. So they were better than in Iowa? Better than in Iowa. At that time. Yeah. It's the reverse right now. Iowa roads are better than Illinois roads. Well, I guess they're just making up. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, it's been very nice talking to you, well, and I appreciate you letting us do this. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope I haven't given away any deep, dark secrets. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> about Would you tell us a little bit about some of the parties that were they had up the millionaires had on North State Street? Well, I can't tell you too much about them because I didn't attend their parties. But they were, I think the liquor was flowing. <laughs> and I'm sure they were very gay parties and they had a great time. But I can tell you about a party that, that we attended. Later, a club that we belonged to was on North State Street. The party was in, on, at Hudson's house in our state street, and it was called the Gone with the Wind Party. And we had invitations to um, Melanie and Ashley, um, their last name, what was it? Well, anyway, Wilkes. Wilk. My husband and I were Melanie and Ashley, and then there was um, Scarlett and, uh, Red. and Red. And uh, oh, just all the all the characters. We were all invited as a character, and we came dressed as those characters. 
and we went to Hudson's house, and it was we had a dinner, a very lovely dinner, and it was su southern. Mm -hmm. And they even had peach trees with peach head hanging on the peach, for centerpieces on the table. They were ice cream peaches, of course, hung on some sort of a plant. And, um, of course, chicken and all the things that go along with the Southern Party. And we all had a great time because we were dressed, you know, to fit the part. And, um, and we danced, had an orchestra, we danced. And their house is big, plenty of space for dancing. And, um, uh, a lot of people on our State Street knew that we were there having a party, but they said, how could they have fun without having anything to drink? <laughs> That's a um, did they have any other costume parties that you went to? Um, yes, often we went to this club. What this, was the club called? Uh, Dutch club. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. I think it was too. I think that was it, the Dutch club. Um, we had lots of parties, and one time we had a party out of, at Borton's cabin, and we came dressed like oh, um, old timers. Um, one wagon load of people came dressed like Amish, and they came in a wagon. And um, well, then we'd have kid parties, dressed like kids, mm -hmm. and. Um, one party we had at home, it was, a, we received steamship tickets for our invitations. And when we got to the house, there was a board up the steps, like a, you know, the board you go up to a ship. And, uh, Did you recall whose house that was? Yes, that was Duncan's, but they aren't living now, either one of them. It was on South Independence Street. And I remember that the butter was made into the shape of little steamships. Everything, everything that night was had to do with this steamship affair. And I don't, I don't know what we did for entertainment, but we we might have played cards. But it was quite a, a gala event. And I don't remember any other costume parties. Did they have about one a month or? Uh -huh, once a month. And different people would be responsible? For uh, two, two people, two couples would be responsible. Why did they name it the Dutch Club? Well, because we all paid our share. I think that was it. I'm, I'm quite sure that was it. About how many people belong to it? Well, about um, a dozen. And some, when we had this Gone with the Wind party, they invited other people. Who was Rhett Butler? Oh, believe it or not, Paul Gooker was Rhett Butler, <laughs> the last person on the earth you'd think of. <laughs> but he, he looked the part. Uh -huh. How about Scarlett O'Hara? Well, uh, Scarlett O'Hara was Henrietta Porterfield. That would be fun. Well, it was fun. And it was exciting. And before you leave, I'll show you a picture of me. It, Okay. At that party. Well, I thank you again. <laughs>